let me get the opinion from the experts. Let's talk about a watch that had a big splash, but it's kind of a flop, and will that be cool again? And that's the AP Code 1159. Do Pete, does that age well? And people a big think splash? in like uh, a that big splash a, in terms of controversy, in okay. terms of people saying eh, that, had a big, that had a big splash you know, into a cesspool. Big. Gentlemen, welcome, Armin. Ari, what's going on? Ari, How are you doing? Good to be on camera with you. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm honored little, to be here. Been Ever a while. since that one uh, episode of Watch Girls A to Z, I've wanted to share the camera with you. I appreciate that. So. I've, I've always wanted a hairline just, just like yours. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> what so, about the mustache? Come on, man. That mustache is atrocious. He left it out on purpose. <laughs> exactly. Let it die. That's a beard. That's facial hair. So, uh, I don't know, man. Cool conversation tonight. Uh, yeah, Armin and I were talking one. earlier, just to fill you in, Ari, uh, about, you know, what do we look for on eBay? What do we, when we're on our downtime, what do we search the forums for? I don't want to know what you're looking at on the internet in your downtime, but go so, ahead. So, uh, you know, the premise of the conversation was actually one that I started with the customer, and it's uh, watches that had their day and kind of died. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Okay. And now All that, right. now that you know, a little bit of money's uh, being able to be thrown around, like, what is the watch that you go back to, if I could have owned that 15 years ago, 10 years ago, what's still kind of cool after it died? I think this is great for us too because we see so many weird pieces come in and out of right. the office, come across sure. our desk. And you know, we're fanatics, so me and Jason sit right across from each other. There's constantly, oh man, I should buy this, I should buy this. I email to him, he says it's garbage, I fall out of love <laughs> with it five minutes after I was like, oh man, should I buy this? And it happens all day. Same thing. Every like 34 millimeter Rolex that comes through, I'm like, oh man, I have to have that. And then he's like, dude, right, you so, don't want that. <laughs> all right. So there you go. That's a good example. All right. So what what brands or what pieces would be poison to you? Things that you would just say, this is the plague, no way. So, yeah, no there's interest. definitely brands that are like the absolute, you know, they had their day, they were complete fads, and they absolutely died and will never come back, like Techno Marine, like some of those brands. First of all, it's like, never say bad things about Techno Marine. <laughs> like, I still got one on layaway at Sears right now, even though they're out of business. Is it I'm the full that diamond watch. bezel? Five absolutely, yeah. absolutely. With the colorful stones or the? You know, I can't afford the colorful stones. That was too so much. Like, listen, and the right, rhinestones. First, first brand to like mass produce diamond bezel rubber straps. They were the fad, you know. Okay. There's brands like that that are like garbage, garbage, like gone, dead, never coming back. Okay. Right. Rest in peace. And then there's brands like uh, some some older Zenith, Chopard, some stuff we have on the table, and we'll go through uh, Porsche design. Yeah, right? and this is stuff that I think like I can look at this all day long, and I can look at something and think, oh, that's absolutely horrible. But I can also find merit in damn near anything. Like I can find something that I like about for the right price. It's I don't own that complication. <laughs> Does it make sense to have a minute repeater? Well, like before we started garbage. shooting, you were you were looking at this piece, which is awesome. This is Zenith Double Matic. Huge, hugely complicated piece, big watch in general. But like, you fell in love with this just but, before we started yeah, shooting. I'm still, I'm still in love with it. I might be out of love with it by the end of this episode. But I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna go look and see what we own this for. This is an interesting era of Zenith too. Like this is when they were kind of, uh, the resurgence of leaning on their pilot line a little bit more. So they made it a little bit on the bigger side. They made it legible. They gave yeah. it pilot S complications, your world timer, GMT, alarm for some reason. Why not? It's awesome. Chronograph. The best alarm power reserve indicator I've ever seen. Super cool. That's hot. Yeah. Double date, you know, uh, WWTC esque outer bezel. Zenith was killing it back in the day. Absolutely died. Now you have the resurgence of like the El know, Primero, the El Primero and all movement yeah. and the yeah, Defy yeah. 21 case. But I think that there's a hardcore amount of Zenith guys that like the old stuff. Yeah. Which I agree with. And this watch is this so is cool. even like the beginning of the modern. Like this is or like the tail end of the old kind of deal. And which is cool to me. I, I so, really like. So what do you think courses. caused Zenith to fall off? Was it uh, marketing? Was it not investing in, in the movements and the, and the technology so, behind it? Or? No, I think the movements are the only thing that kept Zenith around. Okay. So really what it is when it comes down to it is uh, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time and then the direction of the company in terms of distribution, how it was discounted at retail, how many pieces were produced, um, you know, it not making it into the right people's hands. There's a lot of things that can, then can have a downfall on the brand. But what's funny about Zenith I always find is it, this brand is so ingrained into watch enthusiasts to the point where 
El Primero belongs in any collection. You know, yeah, any sure. caliber yeah, of El Primero belongs in any collection. Yeah. And it has such a, the El Primero backstory has such a weird backstory where at a certain point their head watchmaker had to hide the tooling, right. the schematics, in the house. parts in his house I do during the quartz week. crisis. I mean, I do it too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. But that's just this level of dedication that, you know, this one guy had that single-handedly made way, the brand have another By the way, he's a brand, he's a hero in the watch industry, but at the time, Grand Larson. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Like, he, he, the only reason he kept course. it a secret was because he was going to jail. <laughs> like, Grand Larceny. But anyhow, uh, that is, I would say, my my favorite piece on this tray, the double matic. I'll take I, your lead with that. I, I have a follow up favorite. for the price, for the complication, for what it is. But um, my second favorite piece, and I'm just gonna scoot right over to what might be your favorite, is that WWTC titanium. Very close. No, is it very close. No, my favorite's actually the Chopard, man. Oh, really? This, I, I'm, right, a, go for the show I'm a sucker for funky dials. This has that one of the funky. funkiest. I mean, I would wear it on a yellow, obnoxious NATO of some sort, but... Uh, oh, because the, uh, the yellow dial you can see from space isn't enough? You need more yellow on that? <laughs> well, I gotta have a little bit more yellow. I mean, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't you just go for yellow stitch? Yeah, just yellow no, stitching No, no, yellow exactly. stitching's too muted, it's too low-key. Okay. 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 But Not I mean, this, this piece in general, the Mil Miglia line in general, had its heyday, what, in the... 2006 yeah. to 2012 range, maybe. Albeit not with that case, Not really. with this type of case, you're right. But, and that is titanium, so there's some benefit there. I can see you rocking that watch. I would, I would wear this. You know, it's a light watch, it's fun, and for a couple grand, it's, you can't really argue with it. And one thing I do really like is that they sold a set of these. I think there was a set of five with yeah. a blue, oh, cool. red, red black, uh, yellow, and silver. So the yellow is the coolest style. The yellow is the coolest style, yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right, what do you look at on the table? And so, all right, so tonight I decided to wear um, uh, my gold Casio G-Shock in honor of Josh Rolvin. Which is amazing. In the uh, Hong Kong office. This is what I refer to as the toilet oak. Um, <laughs> but a nice corollary to this would be the uh, toilet oak offshore, which is what I refer to as New Bell and Ross. Um, since I got little arms here, I'm gonna have to reach for it. One of the things that amazes me about Bell and Ross and so this is your favorite. Do you see that segue? This is this is one of my favorites, right? Is um, sort of the fact that they did something really interesting, which is they saw that there was huge demand for uh, maybe a, a more approachable price point, right? So you saw it with uh, the Frankenstein version of the Nautilus with the blue dial meets like uh, uh, a jumbo and all that, which is kind of interesting. Now it became very controversial. They got a lot of press for it. I'm sure you have people that are buying this. There's inquiries. Is the movement anything great? No. Uh, is the style? We're talking anything the 05, great? the newer generation. Yeah, yeah exactly. O5. O5, so, but like, like the reason, is, just so you know, because I, yeah. I, the reason I pulled that watch when we were talking, that's an 02. This that is watch O2. is not made anymore. Oh, it's wow. been discontinued okay. for a long time. That's another like golden age. That yeah, watch, this is like kind that of watch in its heyday, the 02, and I sold Bell, I sold many, many Bell and Rosses yeah. at retail. That watch was absolute fire. Like, oh yeah! When you got that watch, you called somebody they came and picked it up. Limited editions came with patches. They were the first to do these crazy box sets and with the tools. They still are fun to wear. Yeah, they are cool watches. Cool. That watch is a watch to be had. I routinely look for O2s in titanium. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not the rose gold because it's a little but out there. Is, rose gold and PVD but has a look. Titanium O2 with a carbon fiber dial is on my regular eBay search. Sure, sure, sure. So if sure, I could sure. find one for like 1500 Well, what's cool, I know? think what's cool about this and what Bell Ross has done is um, you can get it at, you know, the right price point. You can enjoy it. Um, you know, maybe you don't have quite the budget for a Nublow or, you know, a more premium that brand. That is a Hublot-esque watch, right? And this, is, this is gives really you the style is. and the look, so that, right? So this is like the Zara for uh, uh, certain types of horology, if you will, where yeah, it's just, so that, you know, you that wear it O2 like was of the generation right after you know, that was when Bell & Ross was getting their legs behind them of making their own watches. This is after uh, Zinn produced stuff, and these things were bomb-proof. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah. the Bell & Ross of today, and there's nothing wrong with the Bell & Ross today, but they're moving towards... No, there's towards, still a lot of pieces that I like They're like moving Bell towards, like, the 126s, the, you know, the vintage chronographs, not so much the instrument pieces anymore. Yeah. The O2s are tanks. So you got some interesting pieces here. At what point does what's, you know, once was hip become hip again? You know, vinyl suddenly became very collectible again, or people didn't care about you know, so any other product, whatever you might want to do. I stand by what one thing. This back? Maybe for all Frank Mueller has an exciting, you know, I think it's in 10 I think years it's the or, stuff that that your memories are made of, man. It's like okay. you want to buy, you know, you grow up, you got some money, you want to buy that car your dad had when you were five. You know, you want to buy that '70s Cuda. 
because that was cool and now it's cool again and you want to build it, you know? I agree with that to, um, a, to a certain extent, okay. but I definitely do think that uh, in terms of the watch industry in general, people are kind of sleeping on complicated watches right now, currently. Whether they're grand comps or just, you know, perpetual calendars or pieces that have a ton of complication in it or weird complications, useful complications, people are sleeping on complications Yeah, they in want general. that time-only stainless steel sport watch yeah. that has sharp cases and lugs yeah, yeah, and yeah. may or may not be a 15400 or 500. And there's so much on the periphery of, the, of what's hot right now in the collection world that is, in my opinion, so much more fun to collect because if everybody's searching for it, I don't know, there's just sort of this yeah, it makes it too mainstream, and it's almost you a soullessness kind of, in, a, in a sense. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like the you know we all love Rolex. My dog is oh. named Rolly. Yeah, like I mean, the hypest watch right now that is complicated is a chronograph or a GMT. Yeah, 100%. Well, like the, yeah, yeah, I mean the, the Daytona. Daytona. It's and really, is it that highly complicated? It's a chronograph. Daytona's always been a chronograph. Yeah, like and it's a great chronograph. It's it's an awesome watch, but. It's an awesome thirteen thousand one hundred dollar watch, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, correct. Um, I, you know, so when you look outside the box, to your point, to, to what you're, mm -hmm. you know, kind of going after too, complication for the money. If you can stomach taking something that you know might be a little doggish now, but fifteen years ago it was cool as hell. Like, there's a lot to be had, man. Well, yeah. there's a lot of watches. Here's the other thing too. A lot of it is the confidence of the person wearing it, right? I can meet the most boring person in the world with, uh, you know, a Rolex Daytona. It's the hottest watch and go, this is just a person who bought a watch because of that. They don't know it. I can meet you guys, see where one of these, you know, the story, the history behind it. Now it's a cool watch. Now it's an interesting watch. Yeah. So I think a lot of it has to do with the personality behind it. You know? Every person you see wearing something specific, right. they're now an ambassador for that watch. Exactly. So they exactly. tell their story and it, and it either sells you or doesn't. Like I... I go talk to Armin and he's wearing that watch and I'm like, ah, it's a 36 mm. Look, yeah. that's, that's why I love he's Speedmasters. Like, did you I know love George this, Clooney. He's, he's like, did you know mom. that this dial used to be blue? Now exactly. it's green because of the... Exactly. And then, you know, it tells a story. Exactly. Uh, vice versa, you know, uh, people walk up and go, wait, that's not supposed to be on a strap. You're like, well, actually, this is an aftermarket, you yep. know, or factory reorder strap, but it has a bracelet. And then now they're like, oh, I didn't know I could get a strap. I didn't know I that. could get a strap, which right. opens and people up to so, the, uh, right. you know, so, the so opposite. And I know people are walking up to you and asking you what this is. Yeah. They, you know what's funny? They, they asked me about this. I said, I got this from the middle of the mall. Go down, you know, Woolgrove Park, have a blast. You can get one too. But you know what though, like something about this is like, it, it kind of has the bling, but it's not. It makes me feel like Lil Wayne for about three seconds a day. But, and then I realize I'm short and I'm not Lil Wayne, I'm Lil Ari. At the same but that's time. Okay. You can wear that, and if you, uh, you know, if you wore two watches at the same time on your left wrist, you could have your engraved Jorn, and people would go after that first. Yeah, it's true. That's true, right? You have you have all that too. You know, so that Jorn is a little bit more on the low key side, but it's more special to you, and you know, might right. not be recognized. So, so let me let me get the opinion from the experts. Let's talk about a watch that had a big splash, but it's kind of a flop, and will that be cool again? And that's the AP Code 1159. Do pe does that age well? And people a big think splash? in like uh, well, a big splash a, in terms of controversy, in okay. terms of people saying that eh, had a big that had a big splash you know, into a great. cesspool. Correct. Uh, uh, that went straight to the porta potty. Yeah. But, um, that was a bit of a rough. I don't race. think that there's a. I mean, unless AP says right now discontinued doesn't exist anymore. I can see the watches. You know, obviously yeah. there there's limited production. Yep. Then they then they jump. Do they go back up to retail? I don't know. So like, I, I'll, I'll, I'll interject and say we have one. We've looked good. at it several times. It does not we look We have good the rose gold blue. I know. Which the should be the best. the best. Yeah. And you pick it up. We literally picked it up before we were, <laughs> we were pulling these watches from the vault. Mm -hmm. Ari, I picked the watch up. I went like this to him, and we both said garbage. And <laughs> yeah. Put it down. You know, like, and, 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 you know, that's the irony because you think about all the time and money that went into developing that, and then at the years, same time. Eight years. Years, supposedly. Eight years. Eight, Eight years. years. Well, that's like me. I, you know, seven years of procrastinating and twelve months of designing exactly. and production. They, they, they were getting ready for a show and they went, "Oh, we got to get something." It's me, whenever done. I went to any. But school you know, ever. you think about it. You, they put all the time and effort into it, and they just, they absolutely, just got everything wrong with it, and it probably did more detriment to the brand than anything else. Like I don't think that I look at AP. Well, at the same regard, time, I, look, I, I have not, to applaud them a little bit because they have to break free of the Royal Oak. They have they to do, do and something. And there's a certain level of, there's something to be said for any publicity is good publicity, yeah. right? So people were talking about AP for a while. 
Now, people are still like gossiping. All on the it phone did though was reinforce the fifteen five hundred. Yeah, I, I think the consumers would rather see them, you know, get their production in line, get their operations in line. Um, as a manufacturer myself, it's great if I have a product that that sells and I have a market for it. I'm better to fulfill those orders than necessarily go completely in the opposite direction, bring something out that nobody asked for, that nobody wanted. And I have, and that. I understand wanting to maintain the value and what you know. They, they've certainly shut down ADs and done their thing, but I don't think that's a strategy that's working for them. And they completely just so they had, they so what they had to go vertical integration to like save the hemorrhaging. What they so should have they done. They needed though, to pick up the extra revenue. So true. Uh, if I if I'm quoting this incorrectly, uh, forgive me. But Richard Mill approached AP about having a line, a different line of watches, and ultimately that formed into AP's concept line. Okay. In my opinion, a bit of a mistake. They probably should have taken the Richard Mille train. Absolutely. And it would have been all a different the way, story. All the way to but the bank. At the same time, what they should have done is done a re-release and a couple different models of a late 70s, early 80s piece that they had that was rectangular. It's like a rectangular Royal Oak on a bracelet. You know what I'm talking yeah. about, right? Well, when they originally produced it, it was, geez, it was probably a 45 millimeter by, you know, 27 millimeter case. They're still super cool. They're still and, super and cool. By the way, and very collectible. To, to uh, circle back to an earlier conversation, watch that I look for on eBay. Same. Same Me, here. All the time. <laughs> That's one of those vintage watches that I will go out of my way to own yeah. one day. And if they, at, you know, at the time the concepts began, if they kind of adopted that as another line, yeah. where we are now, they would be on absolute fire. Those watches, you know, make, make a Royal Oak version of it, you know, a thinner in steel, kind of a little bit classic on a bracelet, and make an offshore version that will compete with the Richard Mille, will compete yeah. with the kind of empty, um, well, not anymore, but empty at the time, weird sports luxury market. But we're gonna lock this so up. So we're gonna lock it out. Anyway. Cheers. Cheers.